<laughs> now, today I'm joined by Mark Lutton, who, if you watch the most recent series of the Great British Bake Off, you will be very, very familiar with. He was a Becker on the most recent series and he lives in Liverpool. So we were all behind him and rooting for him. Um, so I'm really, really happy to be joined by Mark today. How's it going, Mark? You, you okay? Hi, Josh. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks a million for having me. Excited to be chatting to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, Obviously, we, there's quite a lot to talk about. Um, you've got obviously. We, I want to. I want to talk about the Great British Bake Off, which must have been an incredible experience. And also, you you've just launched a new project that I think you know would be really really cool to talk about too. So so let's let's dig right in then, shall we? So first of all, I think everyone wants to know what was it like to be on the Great British Bake Off. What was it like? I mean, it was a bit of a whirlwind experience, really. I had, um, you know, it was so it was filmed July August last year, so it feels like. All, not a distant memory at all. It feels like it was almost yesterday, but it was, yeah, it was quite a while ago. And, you know, I found out I was going to be on the show in around March time. And obviously with all of the sort of lockdown restrictions and everything going on, I wasn't really sure if it was going to happen to be honest. So sort of questioning, right, well, I've got myself on uh, the back off somehow. Is it actually going to happen? You know, it was sort of like, yeah, wondering about whether it was even going to go ahead at that point. Um, and then suddenly it all just happened and we ended up in this sort of bubble together with all the other contestants and, and the, the, ca- the crew and the cast and everything. So it was phenomenal. I think my experience obviously that has been very much in a COVID time of the break off. So I don't know what any other year year was like, but it was just phenomenal to be part of. And I think like one thing for me that got me right from the get go with back off is it really is exactly what it's like on TV. Really? Um, and that woman walking into like the tent for the first time, um, w- w- it was incredible. I mean, it was quite, it was almost quite emotional, really, going in and seeing sort of all the benches set up and seeing um, where you're going to be backing for the judges and things. Um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. So the whole, the whole thing was exactly like I expected it to be, and, and even better to be honest. And what was it like, sort of, when you got that that final call to say, "Listen, like you've made it, Mark. You've made it onto the back off." What was that like? The call came on the same day that we sort of all went into lockdown. Um, so it was definitely quite mixed emotions. It was excitement, but you know, definitely feeling like it wasn't going to happen. Almost, you know, like um, I was like, "Well, how on earth would that?" do any of this or and I think also it was around the time as well that there was you couldn't get flour anywhere you couldn't get sugar anywhere it was a nightmare from a becking perspective so I was like how are you ever going to practice any of these types of things I remember getting the phone call when I was in in the living room upstairs I think it was the first day working from home and the phone call came through and I think I just expected that that was it I don't I don't know why but it almost sort of accepted the fact that I wasn't gonna you know get on get on the show and my wife was standing next to me and I think she could just, she just started screaming. And then, yeah, I just, yeah, I was really excited about it. It took me a little bit of time to process it. And I don't think I really fully processed it until that first day I walked into that tent, really. Did you get a real sense that your kind of like life as you know it might change for you a little bit, you know, from that moment to like when it, you know, when it aired on TV? Um, a little bit. I think the big thing is obviously having to keep it a secret from everyone is really hard. And actually probably easier this year because, you know, we weren't seeing anyone or doing anything. So you didn't have to make that many excuses. I think I had a feeling, you know, that it was probably going to be a bit of a strange experience when it comes on TV. An immediate feeling, obviously, of sort of apprehension around, you know, what's it going to be like watching yourself back or, you know, what's it, it's going to be a bit strange because, you know, you know, I'd never been on TV before, you know, none of the other contestants had. It was a totally new experience for all of us. So quite apprehensive around what was maybe going to happen when it was aired. But the focus is immediately on the backing. So, like, for me, it, you almost don't really think about that bit. I immediately just started thinking, right, I've got to prepare, you know, a load of recipes here. I've got to develop, you know, what really challenging things. So it was just like head down and getting on with that. The hardest thing about keeping it a secret is obviously the fact that you're you're producing copious amounts of Beck products out of your kitchen and they need to go somewhere. <laughs> so I was always giving them away to friends and stuff and, and not obviously telling them why they were getting, you know, half of a head from a keck bust that I'd cut up, you know, so they couldn't tell what it was. But they were getting, you know, loads of keck all the time. And I was like, well, I'm just a bit bored in lockdown, you know, just just making all this stuff. Start to get messages, I think, when the first week that I got announced, you know, from people saying, did I just see you in Lancashire Services or something? Or did I just see you here or there? I'm like, you did? Yeah, that was me. Um, Those are the things that I find most bizarre are when, you know, when people 
not bizarre. It's honestly lovely when people recognize you and say that they supported you and things. It's really nice. But that's the hardest thing sort of to, you know, get used to, I think. So obviously to get on the show, you must have a keen interest in, in becking um, and, you know, I guess food in general, really. So like, where does that come from with you, Mark? And what's your kind of history with that? That comes from... I said this actually during my, you know, audition process for Beck Off as well as I don't, you know, I didn't grow up sort of becking so much at all, really. I didn't really have an interest in that growing up. I didn't, you know, do, you know, Beck with my mom or anything like that, really. When I went to university, um, I didn't really either then until probably a little bit later when, you know, it sort of all stemmed from me from a love of food, I think, you know, I, I love food and, and, you know, um, I love going out for food. I love finding places um, that are new and, and, you know, working my way through menus. And I, I absolutely love, you know, going to bakeries and everything else. You know, I grew up in rural Northern Ireland. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of that type of stuff around, you know, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a Greg's or anything. <laughs> or, uh, so actually when I went to university, sort of discovering that a little bit more and then sort of getting interested in how those types of things were made and then realizing really that Becking has a big sort of, um, you know, positive effect on my life whenever I am Becking. It's like the thing that I do to de-stress. Now, I suppose an instant reaction to that is why on earth did you go on <laughs> that's your de-stressor? And it's a good question, but um, I, I, de- I, you know, use Becking all the time to sort of, Becking and cooking generally, I suppose, to sort of switch off from, from, from life and to switch off from whatever is going on. And that's where it developed from really, just, you know, starting out, you know, making sort of lemon drizzle cakes or sort of brownies or sort of, you know, really simple things. And then just learning to sort of try to then get into pastry and sort of more savory things. So anyone starting out, anyone who's got any interest, I mean, start small, start with sort of things that you love to eat and you'll only love it. I mean, if you're creating things that you love to eat, um, you're, you're going to enjoy it, you know, so just keep replicating that. You Obviously you've lived in Liverpool for a while now and, did you use, you know, we've got we've got a great scene for food and drink mm-hmm. and, and, and that sort of thing, you know, here in the city. Did you take any inspiration from from the city and what you've experienced here? I mean, there's lot I mean, there's lots of in Liverpool, there's tons of sort of you know, bakeries and restaurants that I love. I mean, my favorite bakery in Liverpool is Rough Handmade. It's just just phenomenal. And I mean, I don't think I'm ever I mean, the reason I don't make croissants or anything like that is because I know that I can get them in rough handmade so much better than the ones I'll ever be able to make at home. So, you know, I think there's a great Liverpool sort of bakery scene and amazing restaurants all across Liverpool. Liverpool is so diverse in terms of its, its you know, food. It's got, you know, so many different cuisines. You know, Bull Street is packed. I don't think there's a single restaurant that's like another. You know, it's packed with different restaurants. You know, all across the city, there's tons of options. So I think, I mean, I think it's the sort of diversity of Liverpool food that I really like. What are... Peru and and Paul actually like you know is what you see is is that what it is it's what you see it's what you get with with Paul and Peru or you know what how does that all work what's their dynamic Paul and Peru I mean Paul and Peru are great I think um so sort of outside of the tent there's not that much interaction with Paul and Peru you know obviously because they're impartial and they're and the judges and things so our real interaction with with Paul and Peru was, was in the tent they were both really great. And I think the feedback that they provided, their critique, um, you know, just being able to back for them is is amazing. I mean, there's such few people who get that opportunity to do that and to be able to get feedback from people like Paul and Pro on your food, especially if it's good feedback, you know, that's amazing and there's a real confidence boost. They're, 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 you know, both lovely. They're both, you know, really experienced and really knowledgeable, really kind. They were exactly like what they, they, you know, are on TV. You know, um, of course, that you sometimes get harsh feedback, and that can be hard to take. You know, especially for some things. But, you know, they were great. They were really always really supportive. And yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was obviously amazing to meet them both. And then obviously I, I need to ask about um, Noel and Matt as well. I mean, sometimes when I'm watching it and I see these guys sort of interacting with 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 the likes of yourselves and the other Beckers, I sometimes think, are they getting in the way or is it all a bit of fun? <laughs> or like, you know, what is it like sort of um, having those guys sort of peering over your shoulders and coming for a chat? 
sometimes they get in the way, but it's very, it's not, does not very often that that happened. I mean, and uh, if they came over at a tough time or something, or, you know, you really needed to concentrate or, you know, it was maybe the time was taken along or whatever. Then, you know, there was one time I said to Matt, I was like, oh, can you come back in 10 minutes or whatever? And he was like, oh yeah, I'll come back. So they're totally there to support, you know, all of us. And they were, you know, hugely important whenever things were, you know, getting tough to actually take two minutes away from what you're doing and have a chat with Noel or Matt was actually really good. And I suppose, you know, I was worried about that as well. I was really worried about how am I going to back and talk to Noel and Matt um, and talk to the camera and all of those types of things. I was a bit worried about that before. And, you know, me and my, my, my now wife at the time were having, not now wife, she was my <laughs> wife then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've only recently got married. She was my <laughs> wife when I was practicing as well. She was sort of like, um, while I was backing in the kitchen, she was sort of um, asking me questions and things at the same time to try and prepare myself for what it would be like with with the whole map. But no, they were really really supportive and and fun. And I mean, I think that fun is really what you need in there whenever it's intense as well. You know, they can bring definitely a, you know some humour to things. Let's talk about that. You've got a new project. You're launching a new project this month in liverpool so tell us uh, tell us a bit about what that mm-hmm. is so i mean it's all come about really because i at the minute you know no one can go anywhere there's no travel nobody's going on holiday no one is going anywhere outside of sort of their own city and and for me you know travel has been and is a big part of my life so i wanted to bring sort of to my instagram sort of uh number of dishes from countries all across the world so it's called the world at your table and what i'm doing is sharing 28 recipes from 28 countries over 28 days so every single day in february i've got a brand new recipe on my instagram from somewhere somewhere else in the world and it's all sort of really easy recipes recipes that you can do at home hopefully with limited ingredients as well my aim is that you can get most of these things sort of in your your local corner shop or sort of small supermarket so as part of that i've also got some live cook-alongs one of the live cook-alongs i have as well is with marae uh, with james and john from marae who are going to show show me and everyone who wants to join how to make their famous disco cauliflower now i have to say if i could pick one dish in liverpool that i've missed the most or during lockdown it's probably marae's disco cauliflower so um i'm really excited about that and i've got other lives sort of planned for sort of later this month as well why is it so important for you now to to do this project now i think right now there's just very you know how many walks can someone go on in a, in a week <laughs> i think that's what i'm feeling i'm like i just can't go on any more walks i mean i need something else to do you need something else to focus on you know i've been <clears throat> you know focused on sort of doing this and you know it's been great to do that during lockdown i think the first lockdown we seen sort of like a mass massive rise in sort of people buying back ingredients you know the sardo starters were developed you know banana breads galore the thing motivation in sort of the this third lockdown is definitely diminished just generally i think and you know i feel it you know i feel a huge you know actually i don't really want to do very much you know i'm really happy just you know switching off at night and you know going to bed and then just repeating it the next day because it's really hard to keep going and to keep you know pushing through you know what is another lockdown and trying to break that sort of monotony of what is the four walls of your house so i think yeah the timing for this really is to bring just a little bit of something to to people's instagram feeds to be able to give them some inspiration in the kitchen so i think there's loads of opportunities to engage others and you know with live cook-alongs and things you you could join with friends um you know in in other places and then you could always eat the dish together over zoom after or something like that you know without sort of restaurants being open and without um you know people being able to travel obviously experiencing sort of new food on cultures is is more difficult at the minute so so bringing a little bit of that and a little bit of the stories behind the food to people's to people's you know homes is is the real inspiration for it it's 28 28 countries i believe in 28 days so can you give us an idea of what sort of countries we'll be visiting around the world i've got um recipes from nepal hungary south africa Obviously, Northern Ireland will feature. It's also Global Scouse Day at the end of this month. So there will, of course, be a, a Scouse recipe on there for, for everyone who's not from Liverpool who follows me. I'm thinking about doing it in sort of, a, of doing sort of maybe a Scouse pasty. 
Um, so I reckon that would be really good. So a range of countries. I'm trying to cover as many sort of countries as I can. But obviously, it's you know limited. But I'm trying to have as broad a sort of um, range of of foods as like as, as possible. Hopefully, people will discover new dishes that they that they you know they never even knew existed before. And if it goes well, if you know after the 28 days it goes well, is there is there a chance that you might maybe maybe not every day, but you might continue this on into into next month and maybe on throughout the year. Yeah, I think I will. I mean, I think the uptake from it has been amazing. Like, you know, already I'm seeing loads of pictures of people creating things, loads of messages, people, you know, from people saying that they're loving all of the dishes that I'm putting up. You said you're going to do one for, um, you're going to do something Scouse related for Global Scouse Day. What, what if you got Paul Hollywood to, to, to take you on? Who can make the best Scouse pasta? You never know. Oh my word, who could make the best Scottish pasty with Paul Hollywood? I mean, do you think he'd be up for that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, you, 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 you've got the contact with him, mate. You're going to have to ask him. I think <laughs> you've heard it here first. This is this is you officially calling Paul Hollywood out to make a Scottish pasty with you. <laughs> All right, Paul Hollywood, if you hear this, let, let's let's have a Scottish off of who could make the best Scottish pasty. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, imagine if he took me off of that. I don't, I don't think he would. But you know, who knows? Stranger things have happened. Yeah. For people People that um you know that want to get involved and want to check all this out how can they how can they find you mark yeah so find me on instagram at the baking buddha all my recipes are sort of being posted there all for free easy to access and on all of the recipes are sort of under each caption on my instagram feed so they'll be sort of predominantly sort of baking related things but also Lots of sort of cooking too, um, and also some drinks involved as well. Good, sounds good, yeah. And and like you said, obviously we're we, we're into February now, so people can go back and and see the, the the recipes you've already posted. Then I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, go and go and have a look at all of those previous recipes. So it'd be amazing to get people in the city involved and you know baking and cooking along to it um, as a way of sort of trying some new things and, and getting involved. Yeah, listen, it, sound, it sounds sounds amazing, and and hopefully, you know, for anyone that's watching this, definitely get involved and tag you in. I guess get some pictures up, tag you in, and and let's see what everyone can make. Let's see if people can replicate your your recipes. This is sort of the start of things, you know, because you you know, if you see a recipe on my page, you know, go and have a look at other recipes that you know maybe do the same thing or slightly different, and and feel free to sort of play around with things and and make them your own. If you're an, an a sort of new cook or a new baker, I promise you that you'll find something on there that is right that is right for you to try. So so go right. and have a look. And tag me in all your questions. I absolutely love to see them. Great, great. Listen, um, best of luck with it all, Mark. Um, I'll certainly, I think I'm going to have to give something a go now. I'm going to have to give one of these dishes a go and, and tag in and let you know how I get on. Hopefully you'll you'll continue on and, and keep inspiring people to to cook um, in and around the area. And uh, yeah, it was really, really great to, to catch up about the, the Beck Off and, and your experience there. It sounds like it was a, you know, a real life-changing kind of uh, once-in-a-lifetime experience, in fact. It was, um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I did ask if I could apply again, but I don't think I can. So <laughs> it is once in a lifetime, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah maybe they'll have like a, like a kind of um, an all stars type, um, you know, series where they bring the the best of the of the bunch back um, uh, to, to have a go. If so, we'll make sure we get your name out there. We'll get you. Please, back. Yeah, please, I'd be up for that. Definitely, I get a petition on the go. Yeah, nice one, perfect. Yeah. Uh, listen, Mark, thanks very much. Cheers thanks so much, and all the best. Nice one. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Really lovely to chat.